Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, D'Anthony. That was a monstrous hit of marijuana. You every now and blew again, blew out of your mouth hole. Every now and again, we have to do a serious show. Yeah, we and do. For me to be able to do that, got to be real. Got to be real high. Real high. Got to amp it up. Yep. Got to get a little green inside <laughs> that system. Uh, our guest today is uh, Mr. James. Is it, it's Klug with an umlaut, right? That's it. You got it. Yeah. Where's that umlaut going over that you? Oh, yeah. Right over. Goddamn right, right over it is. You. Man. Yeah. What'd you do on the SATs when you had to put the umlaut in there? Uh, I think it automatically bumps up your SAT by about 50 points. I think it uh, does. But involved. How yeah. did you double dot it on the on the thing is what I don't understand. I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah. You never I just, did. Yeah. I take the loss on that one. I feel like German people should start suing the government. For uh, umlauts? Everybody else is oppressed. Why not get in on it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't put my fucking real name here. Yeah, it's strange, man. <laughs> right? Umlaut exactly. oppression. Umlaut oppression. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. We shall overcome. And then it's just, it's just everybody holding up two fists, like umlauts over their heads. Wait, let me. The Germans, they've never oppressed anybody, right? I don't think so. Um, Germany's got a pretty uh, clean history, except mm. for. Wait, there was two instances. Never mind. Two instances. There was, yeah. there was a minor blip in, in history, but you know. yeah, God, what was that? Oh, was you mean it? the Holocaust? Ah, yeah. two world wars. That's yeah. it. That's it. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. That often uh, escapes my memory. Um, speaking of uh, world wars, though, it, it appears as if we're having a civil war going on in Portland, and that's where you were. Um, for, yes, sir. Uh, you spent a, an entire week in Portland. Is it as crazy as everything we're seeing on the news right now? Um, yeah. And and you know what? I, I think the news is completely inaccurate about the reporting of it as well. I mean, depending on which news you're looking at, it's like, okay, yeah, it's chaos. Uh, some nights are, are peaceful, right? So like this last weekend that I was there. Uh, and peaceful, I put in quotations. Sure. Um, they really have to push it to get federal officers outside. And just to let you guys know, I mean, you know, when people see the feds, when they're saying, oh, the feds are escalating the situation, the officers show up after maybe the eighth or 15th warning on loudspeaker saying, get off the federal property, stop mm -hmm. setting fires on it, stop shooting fireworks, stop shoot throwing all this stuff and stop running around spray painting the place or trying to burn it down, which I'm sure you guys have seen some mm -hmm. videos. They mm -hmm. offer about, let's just say right around 10 warnings to leave the property. And on the 10th warning or 12th warning or 15th warning, they show up. Surprise, surprise. When you say they, right. you mean the fucking jump out boys, right? The jump out boys. <laughs> yeah, like, the, like, yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they, they cruise, they, they come on out and they let you know they're going to use tear gas. They'll use whatever right gear that they need to use to get you off that property. Now, um, this last weekend, they didn't come out at all. And that's because, you know, sometimes, some nights they just don't, the protesters just don't push it as hard as other nights right mm -hmm. um but they certainly get close i mean they yeah. they for, for anyone that says that oh it's they're the officers are escalating the situation again a lot of these protesters they are begging for it they'll be outside saying wakey wakey pigs come on out all this stuff they're like totally antagonizing trying to get officers to come out and they bait they bait them the whole time i'm sure you got plenty of video footage of this because that's kind of what you do for those of you who don't know james uh I don't know what you would, how you would refer to yourself, but you're almost like a street reporter. Like you go out on the street, ask people to debate you about certain topics. You're always very respectful. You're very well read on all the issues and stuff. And people generally don't know how to handle that, <laughs> typically speaking, because the average. It's, yeah. it's very, it's very confusing to people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, I do, I do street reporting. I do uh, on the street debating. I um, do political commentary. So my YouTube channel, just you know, James Klug, right there. Plug yep. it um so that's that's essentially what i do and, and we go about it i mean exactly we go about it really respectfully and it's funny one of my, my camera guy he's always wearing like vibrant colors i don't know why he does it <laughs> um but he's always wearing like a bright pink or a bright green or whatever it is so we show up we're respectful to people we're talking you know we're talking about pretty tough topics to talk about nowadays and people are just so confused. They'll be like looking at the camera guy, being like, "What the hell's going on? Why is this guy being nice to me? What's happening?" Mm, sure. He's in their head. In their head, you know, a conservative commentator, conservative person is is aggressive, racist, whatever it may be. So they just get totally thrown off. It's actually quite funny to watch. 
Mm, yeah, it is. Actually, uh, I like it. It is. And it's it's one of those things to me where I can't figure out why they're protesting. Um, is it because of the president? Is it because of Black Lives Matter? Uh, what are they protesting exactly? Because, you know, in Portland, when I see the, the news coverage, and obviously you were there, it appears to be just all white people. Um, and it feels odd that they're still protesting Black Lives Matter uh, in Portland, where there is no black people, yeah, are no black people. Uh, it, wh- whatever, man. Uh, Subject verb agreement. Yeah, yeah. The, I never do it. I, think, <laughs> I never apply. No, I don't get it either. Honestly, I it's, never apply that. I to think. My I think in Portland, from what I've heard, the, a, a lot of the stuff that's still going on is about Breonna Taylor. Is that correct? Okay, so you'll get those chants. You'll get Breonna Taylor. You'll get mm. uh, George Floyd. You'll get Black Lives Matter. You'll get all those chants. Mm-hmm. But really, the real reason why they're out there, and this is just, hey, I've spent multiple nights out there. This is what you see. You have you, you look at the type of groups that are out there. You see revolutionary communists. You see Socialist Party. You see Antifa and you see BLM. And they're all out here protesting together. And the reason for that, people are like, well, why are these groups out there protesting about this? Reason for that is because they largely are protesting just the system mm. and advocating for a complete teardown and restart of the system to be kind of more of a socialist Marxist utopia <laughs> that and it sounds like, you know, I'm just jumping to conclusions there. No, I mean, these, these are the groups that are there. These are the chants that are happening. It's it's wildly anti Donald Trump. It's wildly anti police. Um, they're, they're constantly chanting, you know, burn these precincts to the ground. Mind you, the past, what was it, three years at least in Portland, there hasn't been a single unarmed black man shot by police. It, actually, not even Portland, sorry, Oregon. We'll just go with the whole state. The entire state, you haven't had a single unarmed black man shot, it, at least last year. I believe it goes back three or f- maybe even five years. But it's not about George Floyd anymore. It's, 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 it's about the system. And, and people that don't take this seriously... Uh, they really need to look. These people are super unified, and there's thousands of them every single night to about you know 3 a.m., 4 a.m., thousands of people. Um, by the way, there's not a black person in Oregon um, at all, so I, I can't imagine there would be any police um, brutality there. Damien L- it's, it's Lillard. It's a small number. Yeah, it's like 6% or something. Uh, they all play they for the Portland Trailblazers. That's yeah. about <laughs> it. But um, I mean, the, look, uh, the, the other part that I, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around with these protesters is where do they – where do they get the money? What do they do for jobs? And who has this much time? Well, right now they're getting the money from the government because of COVID. For sure. Like that's, you, you could, a lot of this stuff that's happened over the summer, you can fucking lay right at the feet of people being out of work, but also getting paid. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. For sure. I mean, they're getting like a thousand dollars a week and that's, that's, that's way more than enough to fully fund. All that you do is go out at night and protest and riot. That's way more than enough. And not to mention some of these groups are pretty well funded, like the socialist groups, as well as uh, the rev, the rev comms, the revolutionary communists. Mm -hmm. You see these guys, they're flying all over the United States. I'll see them at protests all over the United States and any movement that they can jump in that they can kind of put their, 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 you know, footprint in when it comes to trying to revolutionize the United States, uh, they're there, they're there. And, and the unfortunate part is BLM is totally accepting of that. Why? It it seems like it would only, I I know I've said this in the past on this show, but it seems like it would only muddy their cause. So why are they behind these protests? It does. It, it, you're you're right. It does muddy their cause. And, and for for people that are watching or listening, um, you know, keep in mind, BLM is a hit or a miss when it comes to the aggressive protests. When it comes to what they believe in, you might get thirty. Let's say in Portland, I, I would throw it out saying twenty five percent or so of the BLM leaders were anti the anarchy, anti uh, you know, saying all cops are chanting all cops are bastards, mm. chanting burning mm. this, these precincts to the ground, chanting all this crazy stuff. Um, but the other 70%, 75% is totally for the chaos. They're totally for the, the, um, the destruction because they're just, you know, in their heads, they're over it. They've been quote unquote oppressed their, their whole lives and, and they're over it. And so I think when it comes to some of these movements coming together, these movements all believe in destruction of the system mm. and over- <clears throat> overthrowing the system. They really do. So there's a lot of ideological like similarities there. To where they get together and there's not really a problem. Man, I, it's it's so strange and odd to me that this is happening. And it's, it's I mean, people are really, really fucking stupid. I, Let's yeah, be real. 
people, yeah, but there there is a danger in it, man, because there look, people are getting <laughs> hurt out there, and uh, and you still have to put a police force out there. Yeah, we saw what happened in Chaz, right? Which is our favorite place to uh, Dan and I's favorite place to get an Airbnb mm. together. Um, Vacation galore. Yeah, v- mm. a very big VRBO market there. Um, <laughs> super cheap, but it's a two night minimum. Um, now that you know it became chop, and I heard that they broke that up and everything else. Like, yeah. first of all, it it causes millions and millions of dollars worth in destruction to the cities. Um, but now police officers are forced to deal with this on a on a day in day out basis, which must be exhausting. And I can guarantee you their salary hasn't gone up for this bullshit. No. Well, in NYPD, they're fucking fleeing. There's record retirements. People are opting yeah. out. They're moving to new jurisdictions. Yeah. Like they're losing officers left and right because of this bullshit. And it, it's gotten so bad that Cuomo even was talking shit about fucking de Blasio and his treatment of police. Yeah. That's how when fucking Cuomo is like trying to reel you back in, that's not a good sign. There's a Cuomo yeah. conspiracy going around too. Um, there is, do you know about this one? The, sh- the, sh- the shirt that he was wearing at that briefing, the white shirt. It, oh, with the, the nipple, nipple piercings. Yeah. Here's, he's got nipple rings, yeah. which is a fun flirty thing. Um, was not expecting he, I, that. Yeah. Yeah. I think the world saw that and everyone's like, yikes, this guy's uh a little bit more of a freak than we all expected. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't intrinsically yeah. have a problem with nipple rings. What I have a problem with is a 65 year old man. That's a fucking governor of a major state having nipple. rings. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that is reasonable on my part. <laughs> For sure. I, I, I totally agree. Holy shit. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the sad part about uh, New York is, is, I mean, you know, they're, I believe they're the largest law enforcement agency in, the, in probably in the world, but definitely in the United States, I believe. Yeah, they got about 35,000 full-time employees. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah it, it, at least for their officers. And yeah. I think the state has like 70,000 yeah. around that. So they, yeah. just the city alone has has four times as many officers as LA. And, mm-hmm. and you know, massive. There's a, there's a lot of crime. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of gangs. And the past, I believe in 2019, there was zero, you know, all these sparks about killing unarmed black people, zero unarmed black people killed in, in, in 2019, zero in 18, zero in 17, zero in 16. Like they actually perform very, very well. Mm. Not to mention, you know, they are well-funded, but you have to be well-funded for such a massive city of 9 million people. Yeah, right. And they've been pretty, I mean, New York's been on the ball about doing experimental shit. Even Bloomberg, who is, you know, you can say, sure. say what you want about him, but he was the guy that presided over stop, question, and frisk. By the way, it's stop, question, and frisk, not stop and frisk. Right. Stop, question, to determine PC, and then frisk if you felt it was Absolutely. necessary. Right. That's how that went, by the way, just for you motherfuckers that can't goddamn read. Uh, but anyways, yeah, he presided over that. That is a very aggressive policing policy for a guy like fucking Michael Bloomberg. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but it, you know, I will say this: with New York having lived there, you, you got to do something. A few times, you do. Um, and you know, Giuliani was the one who really cleaned up that city, uh, and I thought Bloomberg did a decent job as well. It seems like it is yeah. going to fucking hell now with De Blasio in there. Well, I mean, Giuliani did well. He and Bernie Carrick, who was the chief of police mm-hmm. at the time, you'll remember him because he almost became Bush's national security advisor until they found out he had a Guatemalan immigrant unregistered as his nanny. Yeah, and he got booted yeah then he went to iraq bummer uh yeah too bad just yeah. you know anyways uh yeah they did well they did well like penn the, station used to be fucked yeah de blasio is not doing well look a, a lot of these cities because i mean I, dan and i just came back from los angeles and uh holy christ what a hellhole that's become yeah. you, can, you can see how it happens uh and it's very quickly and if you don't get ahead of it the city will be overrun either with these fucking people who are protesting uh, for no reason or homelessness or, or whatever because the police are stretched way too thin in these cities to combat Absolutely. all of this shit. Um, in Portland, what do the business owners think about this? Like, do they just shut down shop and just uh, move out to the suburbs? What did they do? Because in Los Angeles, it appears to us when we were there that most of them had just left. Yeah, and those, those storefronts, particularly on pl- streets like Vine, Vine yeah. 18 to $45,000 a month in rent. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, there's a, this trickle effect of the commercial real estate has got to be fucked in yeah. LA right now. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to stay. Yeah. I mean, luckily it's conglomerate billionaires. I guess they'll be fine, but like they're, it's going to change the entire landscape of that city mm-hmm. over the next five to 10 years. Yeah. And what yeah. about, and what yeah. about Portland? What's, what's so, the sense there from business owners? So that's, that's funny. You brought that up. Um, for Portland, okay, just just to paint a picture for you guys, 
Uh, if you go to downtown, there's literally B- BLM spray paint everywhere. It's it's like anti-capitalist spray paint messages. It's anti-police, obviously, you know, kill all cops. This, these aren't uncommon things to see on the walls, uh, on the side of businesses, stuff like that. Uh, most businesses are boarded up, or if le- at least, you know, 50% have, have some boarding up, um, either, be, either for preventative measures or someone broke their window and then they just boarded it up until all this stuff passes. But I did speak to a couple of business owners. One lady I asked for an interview with, I even said, hey, I'll blur out your face. She said, absolutely not. They're going to recognize my store. They'll mm-hmm. recognize my body. They'll do whatever <clears throat> and they'll come after me. And she said, they, it was a small liquor store. One of the, oh, sorry. That's okay. You guys there? Yeah, it was nice to see that umlaut though. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, yeah, honestly, like yeah. honestly, I'm thinking about getting my nipples pierced now. You should. Like two umlauts. That's <laughs> yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's, it's all it is. Cuomo's a secret German. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all he is. He's got umlaut titties. Anyways, yeah, continue, yeah, there you continue go. your very serious conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me know if I'm being too serious. No, 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 no not dude, at all. It's, yeah. it's, it's, we love man, this stuff. I'll, I'll be honest. We love this it. stuff. Bummed me out. It, it bummed me out. And, and this sweetest lady, uh, uh, immigrant from Iraq. The, one of the nicest ladies you'll ever talk to. And she said, yes, I, I had an issue with the protesters or quote unquote protesters. People are going to get mad for me at me for saying that uh, quotes around protesters. Um, they caused twenty five thousand dollars of damage to her store. Wow. And nice. and these business owners are completely over this stuff. She was telling me, hey, listen, I pay taxes. And part of that reason, a big reason is why, why I pay taxes is to assume that I am safe. Yeah. You assume that my business is safe yep. and you'll notice something at these protests where there is not an officer in sight. And I've been talking to a lot of people about this because it's so weird. Uh, I've been to a lot of BLM protests, you guys, like more than I can count. And a lot of times there's officers there just making sure everyone's safe, everyone's doing something legal, right? Mm-hmm. And, in, and in Portland, the officers only show up if there's an issue with them literally attacking a police precinct or attacking federal property and relentless about it. They are nowhere to be found otherwise. And the reason for that is because Mayor Ted Wheeler, he's kind of gone with the approach and he won't admit this, but the protesters simply cannot handle a police presence. These people literally hate the police. There would be police that were up top in the federal building that are just sitting up there, you know, eight stories up. Protesters are shouting, jump. Do a front yeah, flip. I saw that yesterday. Let's see pigs fly. <clears throat> and you're just like, what is like, like these people, they hate police so much. They can't even handle a police presence without getting totally out of control. It's insane, dude. Well, it's insane. We're in triggered culture. I mean, people, yeah. people have been trained to feel like any negative emotion I feel about anything is something that I should express to somebody else that it offends me and yeah. that they shouldn't do that behavior anymore. That this is the fucking landing spot for that type of behavior. By the way. Uh, the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in mm-hmm. the pursuit of political aims, which crashing capitalism and starting Marxism would be a political aim, is called anybody? Anyone want to take that? Yes, terrorism. It's fucking terrorism. <laughs> like, what do we yeah. do? You can't fucking. If you say, if you're an organization, particularly, but even a person, you say, my stated goal is to overturn the political system in this country, mm-hmm. and to do that, I'm going to fucking destroy property and fucking burn it down and get violent. That is terrorism, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. You have to go to jail. Send all these little fucking white turds to Gitmo. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah, and and it won't stop until they get their way. And, and uh, also, I wanted to note for you guys, I, I would actually love to hear your thoughts on this. Business owners all over Portland mm-hmm. putting up POC owned, person of color owned, or Black Lives Matter all on their windows in, in hopes that these racist protesters decide not to destroy their business because of the color of their skin. What are your, I mean, Man, have you guys not, seen that? Pictures yeah, of that? I, I've, I've, I've seen that a lot. And um, there was, oh. uh, God, it, it's everywhere. Um, it's happening in a, lot, in a lot of cities too. Uh, mm-hmm. It was happening in Austin, Texas as well, where people were, business owners were putting that up. Well, you know, they wanted to do, the, they wanted to make a chop Chaz in Austin. They showed up and then fucking the police sent horses out there and ran them off the fucking street immediately. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. saw that. Like yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's Austin, sure, but it's still fucking Texas. It's still bro. Texas, bro. You better bro, slow the fuck down. Yeah. But yeah, even there, there's fucking. Uh, people are putting shit up like POC owned for sure. Yeah, it, it's it's sad, and I'm I'm personally angry about it. Um, I just feel like we're losing a grip on this country 
very, very quickly. And, you know, to go back to something you said earlier about uh, feeling sad about it, that's the way I felt when I was in Los Angeles because I lived there for so long. I felt sad for what I was seeing. And there isn't enough money, there's not enough police to stop it, to do anything about it right now. And, you know, with Portland, I get it. Um, I wouldn't want to send, if I was a police chief, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to send my officers <clears throat> out night in and night out in this bullshit um, for one of them to get killed or harmed or, or injured uh, protecting or trying to protect people that don't want any protection. Mm-hmm. They don't want any law enforcement whatsoever. And part of me is just like, all right, great. If, if that's what you want in this city, go ahead and live in a lawless city because how long will <clears throat> it last? That's the biggest irony to me. Like when a cop does something that these people don't like that are that are this anti-police that are literally wishing death on any cop, right? Mm-hmm. So a cop does something they don't like and they're like, record it, we're gonna report this. Report it to whom, bitch? Yeah. Like if you don't believe in the system, <laughs> the system isn't coming to fucking help you. You can get fucked, motherfucker. By the way, I said this on the show last week, uh, James, I don't know if you happen to see it or not, but if all this breaks down, this capitalist patriarchy, all these fucking weak little turds out there are just gonna get all their shit taken away by me. Dan's just going to take their shit, yeah. and that's going to be it. Yep. I'm um, rolling through in a fucking couple of semi-trucks and a convoy, and it's like, hey, you, all this shit belongs to me now, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like this is being funded by a higher source and power right now? Like A lot of people throw around you know, the name George Soros for all of this. Is any of that true? I mean, you're out on the streets investigating and doing reporting all the time. Um, do you think it's possible that part of this money is, is coming from the DNC? Um, do I think it's possible? Honestly, you guys, uh, I'm not the biggest conspiracy theorist, but uh, and it's not because I don't believe him. It's just, you know, I just don't dig into him too much. But when it comes to this, I wouldn't be surprised about anything, to be honest. Like, with how with how radically left uh, the DNC has gotten, I mean, if you guys look at the Democratic platform of early 2000s compared to 2016, it's unrecognizable. Mm. They've gone way, way, way far left. And yeah. You know, when you do stuff like that, when you start to kind of adopt extremism and, and, and leftist behavior, yeah, of course, that's definitely possible. But also what I would say is, you know, if they need out, if they need funding from elsewhere, you, all you have to do is look at BLM that's taken in hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars to do pretty much whatever they want with it. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Like, what are they doing with that money? I, I question. Um, I've talked about this a lot in the last couple of weeks with not just on the show, but with various people that mm-hmm. I know from different backgrounds and stuff, because they're all curious. Everybody's kind of getting frustrated. Like, yeah, we've we've done phase one. Now, what are we going to actually do to fix any of this shit? Because no one seems to have a reasonable answer for that. Um, now, I think it's promotion of education towards careers and then private business ownership financial independence is the most important thing in this country and in any capitalist society but uh as for as far as how to get there and all these people like still kneeling at sporting events like what the fuck are you doing man why don't you stand up do your job and make your money and use your money to do something Mm -hmm. because everybody's aware of this problem but what is what did kneeling do not i like i don't have a problem with the kneeling thing. I don't give a shit about that. That means nothing to me. The point is, is that all the people over here that you're trying to convince are deeply offended by that. Right. So why even do it? You're just doing it to be a fucking asshole. That's you're doing it because you can. That's it. Otherwise, you're stupid. It's one of those two things. You're doing it intentionally to be a dick, or you're doing it because you're too ignorant to see that you're fucking hurting your own cause. You know what I mean? It's yeah. fucking dumb. Take your fucking millions of dollars you get for playing a game, or or making music. And go start some businesses and make fucking black dudes CEOs, black women CEOs. Yeah. Give them yeah. ownership in the company. Let them have financial independence because the only color that matters in this country is green. It is. Uh, and, that's true. And, and that's, that's going to continue no matter what. So my question is, in order for this green to keep going, do you think people show up on November 3rd and vote specifically against what's going on right now in this country? Like, is there a shot that Portland overthrows their fucking mayor, overthrows the, the governor there. Like, uh, we've got a buddy who's running in Oregon, Alex Scarletos. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he's up right now in the polls. Yeah. Um, he's running for Congress. And it's like, it, it, he, nice. and he's a Republican, yeah. He would, I think, be the only one from the, what, the state or the first one in like 27 He would be the first one in that district since the previous guy took over in like 81 or some shit like that. It's been a yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you hearing out there as far as like the vote coming up? Um, 
are people starting to change their mind and being like, hey, man, this can't go on anymore? I think I think the media has done an amazing job at not painting this movement as a Marxist movement. I think they've done an amazing job as not uh, not covering the hate. And I think a lot of people have really fallen, and this is the exact purpose of it, really fallen for the Black Lives Matter name. Is most people that, that don't dig into politics, they don't know any of this stuff. They don't know, uh, they just they just think, hey, it's Black Lives Matter and that's all it means. Yeah. Well, that's not, that's not the case or else I would be totally mm. for it, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Like if you say um, the phrase def- Black Lives Matter, most almost everyone except for assholes is like, yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, and, when- and they hide behind this. They hide behind this name, and mm-hmm. it's a, basically a massive Trojan horse with Marxist agendas inside. And um, I think a lot of the population has is is fooled by it. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it, them are, uh, and I also think you know people also vote their pocketbook. Hopefully, the economy picks back up for Trump, or else he might be struggling. And this mm-hmm. movement. It's not something to underestimate. I mean, these people are seriously motivated. They, it's a big movement. Black Lives Matter is a massive movement. There are you know, tens of millions of people that have protested the past two months. Mm-hmm. Tens of millions. And, and there's nothing more that's, that's stronger of like a driving force than fear, hatred, anger. These are very strong driving forces going to the polls compared to let's say maybe people that are hey yeah my my you know i'm I'm doing well i like how things are um those people are less likely to show up so you know hopefully people kind of wake up and see how much of a threat this is to our society and hopefully they show up but yeah i mean i think i think they'll definitely be voting i i think i think it'll be another really really intense election i think it's going to be pretty close in my opinion i I, I, I don't buy the landslide anymore I don't either, man. I, I've I've said this before on the show. I think it's going to be razor thin, and I think this is going to go all night. And I think we might not get yeah. an answer uh, about who's going to be president until Thanksgiving. If some of these states end up going full mail-in ballots, um, good luck. Well, typically, if they go full mail-in ballot, they start allowing it about three weeks before the election day. Correct, yeah. Uh, and they're not – I mean, it does still have to be manually processed either way. It's like a Scantron sheet that you remember from high school. Mm-hmm. Like you make your selections and they drop it into a thing and it gets counted and all that right. bullshit. So there's going to be a lot more hands-on work. It's not going to be like Florida in 20 uh, or 2000 where there's like chat, hanging chat. That stuff yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, maybe it, it I, I would not be surprised if it took a couple of days. Um, and you imagine the, the, the fucking news coverage there, Trump refusing to admit defeat. And then it's like all this stuff comes in and he wins by three points or something. That'll, that's my guess. Right. You know my, I mean? It's going to be something stupid. I can tell you this, like me personally, and I'm not, I, I don't get too fucking crazy about shit, but like my personal hatred for what's going on in this country with all of this bullshit, um, I cannot wait for November 3rd. Like I'm, I'm waiting for November 3rd as if it's my fucking Super Bowl um, to, for to sure. vote for me personally, um, because I want a, a, a resolution to all of this shit. And I know you won't get it. Um, but at least I'll have an answer for the next four years about what's going to happen um, because I don't know what's going to happen if it goes the other way. Let's say hypothetical Biden gets in there. Um, he's not mentally with it anymore, and I feel bad about that. And I'm not going to. I'm not even going to shit on Joe Biden. Like he served the country for 47 years in politics. To me, that's a little too long. But still, <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying. But but, Way too but long. still, yeah, yeah. Um, but still, like I, I'm not going to to shit on somebody who's dedicated themselves uh, to their country um, and whatever cause yeah. it is and belief in it. Look, it might not be mine, but that's also a job that not a lot of people want. At the end of the day, um, he will more than likely die. In his first term, I mean, there. he's going to be seventy-eight, November twentieth. He has said like this that. numerous times. Yeah. He said, "Look, whoever the vice president is 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 very, very important because I, I might not make it through the yeah. first term," and uh, and he's right on that. Um, but my my fear is that he also won't do anything about what is currently going on, um, because if you let the rest of the country slide, like it is in Seattle, Portland, Los Angeles, and this starts going in New York, this starts going across the country. We're headed towards being a fucking third world country at that point. I mean, I saw some shit. Fucking San Francisco, for Christ's sakes. Like, there's shit going on in the streets that you're like, man, I I saw that in terrible parts of, mm. of the world that uh, I did not think that I would ever see in America. And to me, uh, I think this vote is probably the most important because of 
the perfect storm that has happened over the course of 2020 between COVID and uh, and the protests. And um, yeah, man, uh, that that date can't get here fast enough. But uh, I wouldn't be too worried about it, to be honest, because starting in about two weeks, uh, one, Biden is going to have to debate Trump or make a good excuse why he didn't. And that's going to turn into ads as well. But the digital media campaign that's going to come out of the, the RNC and the Trump uh, administration is going to be fucking nothing but BLM people tearing shit down or Antifa people tearing shit down. Quotes of Jerry Nadler fucking our, our video of Jerry Nadler saying that it doesn't. It's a myth. Do you see that shit? Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Here's a video. Like somebody's showing him a video here. This, they're burning down a federal building. Nah, it's not real. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, dude? Nah, uh, dog, that's not real. That the, shit's going to be playing on loop on every social media exactly. outlet for fucking three months. Yeah. There's no way that Biden's winning. No fucking yeah, the, way. Yeah, the, the right has a lot of ammunition right now, yeah. for sure. I mean, we have a lot of ammunition. The left, uh, the COVID thing pulls well from that. Mm. Like the it does. Whole COVID thing. Yes. It pulls well from, even though New York is one fifth of the total COVID deaths. Like, even <laughs> though all these liberal cities are, are literally the biggest disasters for COVID, somehow they've managed, and I guess because the media is covering them, somehow they've managed to hide from like, hey, it's not really, it's kind of our fault, but don't worry about that. It's Trump. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Well, I what? mean, Trump's, like, how'd you get away from that? Trump's also a knucklehead. Like, he, he, sure. his, his ability with the press is, is a, it's a win and loss every single day. You know what I mean? It's I like totally I I, I totally like it. Agree. I like it because I don't give a fuck who wins. I just think it's I want to be entertained by all this, mm -hmm. right? And he Trump is the most entertaining president mm -hmm. of all time. Of all time, it's not You're even fucking man. close. I yeah. am. I'm, I'm a terrible human being. So <laughs> I love that. But even then, like, there's just no way. There's no way with Biden. The only thing that you can really go against Trump with is the economy and his handling of COVID. But nobody's handled it well. Not in this country. No. And look, I don't think this should fall on any politician of, no. of how they've handled it, to be honest with you, because you're fighting a, a disease that you can't see. We and certainly it, haven't gotten any correct information no, out of China. World Health Order, our organization has been full of shit this whole time. Yeah. The CDC has been wrong about everything. Fauci has been wrong about everything. Look, you can only do so much. Yeah. You, can, you can operate the, the only screw off the information seen, you have. The only screw up I've seen was the... Uh, nursing homes situation mm. where it was obvious that it was the most vulnerable. That's the only screw up. I would be like, Hey, you're responsible or, you know, yeah, partially yeah. responsible for that. Like what the hell were you thinking? Yeah. Other than that, you know, New York, when it comes to popul pop uh, population density, of course they're going to get hit the hardest. Yeah. yeah. You know, their population density is, I, don't, I mean, I'm just going to throw a number out there. Probably like 10 times more than LA. Like it's crazy. Well, there's 8 million people just in New York city. And the five barrels, yeah. right? Yeah, and they're getting the fuck out of there real quick. Yeah, um, because a yeah, lot of this sure. this violence is is headed up to the, like the rich people part up on the Upper East Side, where they're like, "Whoa, we don't see this." Well, you are now, uh, and there's no police there to protect you, and and people are uh, exiting in mass. Fuck, man, I just saw Jennifer Lawrence's house today. She fire sailed that goddamn mm. thing um, for six million dollars less than she bought it for like three years ago. People want to get out of there, and there's there's not enough uh, people that want to move into New York City right now. Um, where do you think this is going to to fall on Election Day? Uh, do you think Trump pulls this out? Oh gosh, there's so much that could happen. Um, here's the thing: I think if Trump focuses less on a similar campaign to like Hillary, meaning that uh, the attacks have to be very strategic because this guy's half living. It's really hard to talk shit to an old dementia, mm. old man, like a, a, gr a grown man that has dementia. It's really hard to look cool talking shit to an old man with dementia. It really mm. is. And if he's strategic about it and points it out and kind of lays off the whole, you know, constantly hitting him for, for stuff, uh, because it doesn't, I don't think it pulls very well, especially with like, you know, people hated Hillary. People don't really hate Biden. They really don't. Mm. Um, if he's strategic about that, if the economy does go up gradually increase or just even kind of stay the same, it doesn't, it, as long as it doesn't totally crash. Um, I think that that campaign is pretty well armed with like what you guys were talking about, you know, videos, photos of BLM, Antifa destroying cities, lawlessness, roaming the streets. I think they're well enough armed with all that stuff to where they have a very good shot of winning. I don't think it's going to be a landslide anymore, though. I, I, I just don't. Um, again, like I said, 
hatred and fear is a very strong driving force for people showing up to the polls. It really is. It is, yeah. yeah. And, and so I think it'll be close, but in my opinion, I do think Trump will win, uh, but not by a landslide. No. No. We'll see. I will see. The, uh, the you, first, you, you still think it, it'll the be fir- the first debate is the third week of August, right? Uh, suppose, <laughs> well, here's the thing: we do have to wait for Sup- that. Too. Supposedly, I'm just saying, man. Is, Supposedly, this my strategy. If I'm fucking uh, the campaign manager over there right now, or the, the for fucking, Biden or Trump for Trump, okay, I'm like ask him questions about his past because recall memory is going to be a problem for him. And we've seen it before. He walked into that one venue and he was like, he thought he was somewhere else that he was at as a child. Every venue, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And the yeah. fact that he goes back, we, we've seen it before. He also uses these like dated references. This, these are all signs of dimension, by the way. But yes. you, you have to exploit it in a way that doesn't seem like you said, James, like you're fucking just talking shit and roasting the guy. Like if you just, sure. my, my strategy would be to ask him about the crime bill, first of all, because he wrote the goddamn thing. Like I don't, I, the audacity of somebody getting on uh, of a, one of the largest uh, viewed black programs on earth, right? Charlemagne's mm-hmm. program, yeah, yeah, like, the uh, Breakfast Club, yeah, it's it's huge. And telling people if they don't vote for him, they're not black is like after you wrote the crime bill that put millions of black dudes in jail yeah. and are primarily responsible for the fact that sixty-five to seventy percent of every black child born in this country is born to a single mother. That's because of you, fuckface. Like, I would ask him that, but then I would get into the dementia shit. Not, you know, subtly. Right. You can't just say, hey, you dumb, man. You don't, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just start talking like a hillbilly. Can you imagine if Trump came out full hillbilly? <laughs> like, he's, he comes out no. in jor- jorts no, and a I fucking couldn't. flannel shirt with the sleeves cut out. Larry the Cable Guy he, style. He, he's, like, got his hair trimmed into a mullet. He's like, hey, we ain't taking no fucking shit no more, man. He's got, a, yeah. he's got a fish hook on his yeah. uh, Bass Pro <laughs> Shops hat. <laughs> Um, Comes out with a beer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Stone Cold Steve Austin just crushes him. <laughs> Starts fucking going ham. What if he started showing up to political events and playing that Stone Cold Walk-In music, the, the glass crashing? Oof, be great. I would. Vo- I'm. I would. I'm not a voting for Trump kind of guy, but I would vote for if he did that. Yeah. Or whichever candidate starts killing pedophiles in the street. If Biden started doing that, he's got my vote. Yeah. Well, uh, it's not going to happen, but. No. Um, it's because it's all, no. all, if, his, if all his friends are fucking children. That's why. Exactly. Yeah. And they're all friends with Epstein. But um, if, if if I'm Biden, I, I, I pass on all of these and say, hey, guys, COVID, um, you know, today he announced that uh, he wasn't going to Milwaukee to accept the nomination that he's going to do from his house in Delaware. Um, there's not going to be any speakers there for the, the DNC uh, convention. Mm. And uh, he's going <clears> to <throat> do it from his house. I think that is slowly setting up of like if 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 they believe these polls. If the Democrats actually believe the polls that are being put out day in and day out, I look at it and say, why risk it? Why trot Biden out there for fucking because those are two hours when you're a one on one like that. It's not like the primaries where you're, you know, you got 12 people and you're maybe getting 14 to 18 minutes of talk time. Yeah, it's two hours one on one on the stage. Yeah, it's and it's real lonely up there. And uh, that would be a lot of time because right now I don't think. That they, he has done a speech or or some form of rally for more than ten minutes online mm. so far, um, and all of them have gone horrifically, including yesterday's on, on oh, CNBC. Man. So it's bad, dude. Like I, I haven't seen anything like it before, which is another like I. This is another reason I think that Trump is going to win handily because why have they still not named the fucking VP? Strange, very very strange. Yes. It was going to be Kamala Harris. Politico accidentally leaked mm-hmm. that story. I don't know if they pulled back because they got backlash from it. Maybe they leaked it intentionally to see what the response would be before they actually name something. They do that in politics quite a bit. Right. It's a very smart move to do that. But who is it going to be then? The rumor is this, that uh, there is some talk inside of his camp that Kamala Harris is too ambitious and will try oh, yeah. to outshine. She's going to murder him? Joe Biden. Nah, not. she's not going to go full Hillary. <laughs> but um, <laughs> She's going to murder him. But she's the one on stage who, Can you, who oh, ripped apart man. Biden, and, oh, uh, did, and yeah. he's, st- he's still fucking salty about it. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's the, yeah. the, the major... Because the other candidates so far, and, and Dan went through this the other day with like Tammy Duckworth, uh, she's, she's a little too boring, not flashy enough. I think Tammy Baldwin from uh, Wisconsin would probably be good too. 
She's well, a, she's the first. You, lesb- need, you need Wisconsin. She's the first. She, it's a swing state, and she's mm-hmm. the first uh, openly gay fucking uh, senator in history. She black? Uh, no, white. White. And okay. she's got a ca- straight up Karen haircut too. Well, there's the problem. There. But oh, yeah. a lot of my friends have worked with and for her. She's actually a really nice lady. I don't agree with her on anything, obviously, but right. uh, I think she might make a good choice. She's uh, a good speaker, but not exciting, which I think is again a problem. Like it's gonna I don't get, think they're going with white people, though. No, I mean, and, probably you know, not. When you're a Democrat nowadays, you have to be tolerant enough to, you know, choose people based off the color of their skin and not by the content of their character <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah, their yeah, achievements. Yeah. So well, I, here's what I think is happening. So who's it going to be? Hard time. Is it going to be Duckworth? Because uh, it's her or Ke- uh, Keisha Bottoms no, or who? Well, the here's fuck the other thing: that, that Karen Bass chick, she got popped for uh, the Scientology speeches and everything else. I mean, shit, man. She's out. Uh, Susan Rice is still lingering in the background there. Mm, I like. I mean, look, Susan Rice is all right. Like politically, she's not, but as a human being, she's good. I think she'd be all right. And she look, she has experience, but boring on as the global fuck. stage. I, I, boring as I fuck. I understand. Dude. Like I wouldn't. Yeah. That's that's to me. That's why I think Condoleezza never ran for president. Because she, like somebody told her, that's why she never got drafted into the movement or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Because people wanted Colin Powell, if you remember. Oh, yeah. People wanted Colin Powell and yes, not. They, did. they wanted him and not George W. Bush. Right. And that probably would have been great for our country if that had happened, to be frank. Right. Uh, but it didn't. So here we are. But, anyways, uh, Connolly's Rice is also boring as shit. She's, mm-hmm. a, she's a walking nerd. That's your fucking VP, mm-hmm. not your president. Like, when's the last time we yeah. had a fucking nerdy, wonky president? It, it, like maybe H.W. Bush, but he was a goddamn war hero. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and I think with now, like you take a guy like Trump, like Pence is boring as shit, oh, yeah. but it was necessary. You can't have two Trumps, two guys that are that outspoken in there. No, it's a team. Um, now with Biden, he's already got his own fucking issues and he can't talk everywhere. Therefore, whoever this VP is better be exciting enough to go out and stomp and campaign for the next three months because it sure as fucking isn't going to be Joe Biden. I can't be. And I think that is their main problem right now. The other problem I heard is on paper. Elizabeth Warren and her policies really match up with what what the party of the Democrats is trying to do right now. Mm. But it's what he said is she's white. So, yeah, well, one like 20,000th of her is native. Ah, that's right. Or 30, 30 30 second, 32,000th. I don't know what it was. Cherokee. Is that how you say it? It was something like that. Marching on the trail of tears, (laughs) Cherokee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of all the fucking, so. of all the uh, uh, stolen valor you could do, racially speaking, that's a bad one in this country. Because we, we kind of fucked them up a little bit. Yeah. Like we that, took their we, entire land. We didn't, we didn't do right by those folks. And no. Then, like, I, pre- I would say that we were a minor inconvenience for <laughs> yeah. that uh, community. Pre- back then. Pretending you're fucking Native yeah. American in this country to get like... <laughs> Scholarship, it's a pretty shit. That's not dicey good, thing to do. That is not great. Yeah, the least we could do is give them some casinos. Like, come on, man. Which uh, also, what does that what does that say about the benefits of white privilege, quote unquote? She spent half her life, if not more, pretending not to be white. I know. Yeah, his wife did that too. Uh, my wife. Uh, well, out on accident. What a weird thing. Yeah, my my wife. Uh, her mom told her for thirty five years that's you know they have Mexican heritage and a strong Mexican heritage and all this shit. So she learned Spanish, put her kids in a Spanish immersion schools and shit. Well that's that, yeah. I mean <laughs> and then twenty three and me came around. It's like, oh shit. They got the test <laughs> and I was like, actually we're Italian. There is not one single ounce of Mexican in us. And wow. And uh yeah my wife's mom had lied to her all these years. Uh on accident. But it was, I love it's that still shit. pretty funny. Uh with Elizabeth Warren though, that's not the case. Clearly she I mean she fought to the bitter end to prove that she was one sixtieth Indian and uh she kind and of she won. even paraded about it when she was proven wrong as well. It was a nightmare. Yeah. So I, look, um, but I think I think if you're going off of uh, her as an orator, I, like she's great at speeches. She was the one who ended Bloomberg's campaign live on stage yeah. and within mm. five minutes. If she's prepared, it's good. She's yeah. good for speeches Correct. for sure. Yep. But it's look, is it going to be her versus Pence on the stump? Because that to me is a win for the Democrats. If that's the case, I agree. Uh, yeah. Like Pence is a he is a smart guy about some things. He still has these deep roots and like fundamentalist Christian nonsense mm-hmm. that people don't seem to like out in public these days. And if I'm her, I just attack him on that shit all the time. Right. Like his anti gay yeah. stuff. Um, and he's I haven't really seen him debate. We didn't see that much. So in the 2012 election, we saw fucking Paul Ryan out there stumping for Mitt Romney all the time. Yes. When. uh 
uh, obviously Biden was out there for Obama all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, uh, Cheney was out on the stump for uh, for uh, Bush all the time. So Correct. that's not been that's not a new thing. No, really. not at all. And, and, and they do give you one debate uh, between the VPs. So it's three. It's typically the format is three for presidential candidates and then two for yeah. or, or one for VP. candidates. I think they should have one cage match. Whoever wins gets to pick whatever VP they want, yeah. and they win the election right there. I'd be great. Like there's no election. It's be a over fucking. That day. Ca it's a cage match, uh, but you can like, you can power up some stuff. Like you can get a fucking chimpanzee on steroids in there. I'd be great. Tag dude. him in. Yeah. Let him rip somebody's arms off. Yeah. Like I want to see a fucking death match. I'm tired of this voting bullshit. Yeah. Uh, it's nonsense. I think we're all done Maybe with throw voting. a couple chainsaws in there and see how yeah. well it works for everyone. Yeah. yeah my, by, by the way, I've been teaching my two-year-old how to juggle them, and uh, he's getting real good. Did you put the blades on uh, yet? Or put is the blades it, on. Yeah. Uh, he's only lost two digits, but uh, he's, he's improving. You can get away with six, really. Yeah, Just like can. a little claw hand. Yeah, a little claw hand's fine. You can still pick yeah. shit up pretty yeah. well with just these six fingers, yeah. for sure. Yeah, look at crabs. It works out for them. Exactly. Well, um, I mean, they powerful get... Powerful species. They get eaten a lot more than we do. <laughs> uh, now's the point in the show we, we get some sponsors to pay for this whole shit wagon on the air sometimes we just get rapping and we we don't get into it first and foremost ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros you ever laid your dick down in a ghost bed he doesn't know yeah, how to question answer for that. me yeah it is <laughs> goddamn right it is a question for you you ever you ever uh you ever lay your dick down in a ghost bed mattress uh, always, always. It, Actually, it's uh, what I do in my morning and evening routine. It's mm. a fine mattress. If you don't have it, yeah. I would recommend uh, hopping out of the shower, toweling off, and uh, just laying your dick down in it. Man, it's a, it's dick a comfortable, comfortable mattress. Um, they are they're the best in the biz, Dan. Uh, right now, if you, you get 30% off if you're a member of the military, a first responder, a uh, member of the government, or a teacher. 30% off everything there. If you're a regular dumb dumb civilian like myself, you get 25% off. And as always, you get uh, two free pillows with yeah. a mattress right now. And there's a 36 month page to go program. Uh, no interest on that. That and is it works applicable with, with all, all of the deals. Those deals. Man. Correct. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, I like that they added teachers to that, by the way. Yeah. Because uh, every time I see a child, I get angry if I even see one. Yeah. So I can't imagine being in a classroom with 40 of them all day. Can you imagine Yeesh. that? Now it's virtual, so you don't. at least you don't have to see them. I know? called a kid a pussy at the car wash the other day. I didn't mean to. How old was it? Six. Ah, Dan, that's too I old. I didn't mean to. He He's was going to remember uh, that for the rest of his life. Yeah, his dad. You, you know what? Sometimes you got to offer. You got to deliver that gut check, though. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. With that. that's, that's, Sometimes. It's, it's called tough love. Uh, yeah. Yeah, his dad drove a Prius, and I was already in, I was already mad about that, seeing a grown mm -hmm. man drive a Prius. I was sure. like, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh, then some noise from the car wash scared him or something. And I just looked over. I'm wearing a mask, obviously. I looked over and like, pussy. Uh, and I didn't realize how loud I had said it. Yeah. But he had turned around and looked. And I don't know if he heard the full thing or had. He has no idea what that means for sure. He's six. Sure. But at some point in therapy, 25 years from now, he's like, that guy at the car wash called me a pussy. Yeah, that bearded Whoa. man with the mask on. I don't know what kids are going to be. He's probably going to be Antifa now because of me. Probably. Sorry, yeah. Ghost. That's, that's, that's important character development, though. It is. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you got to deliver those. It is. But Dan uh, just put another member of Antifa out in the world. Congratulations. That's, right. that's just another person to collect shit for me for the next 20 years, and I'm going to come take it all as soon as the police go away. Goddamn right. Including that ghost bed. If you have yeah. a ghost bed uh, from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, what do we got up next, Anthony? What day is today? Is this going out tonight? Who knows? No. Uh, this is not. It's going out next week. Next uh, week. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, ooh, Felix Gray's on here. Felix Gray. Glasses.com. I wonder what the new Forward data slash is for this. What's the new data on how much time in front of screens? Because it was 11 hours before. It was. It's got to be like 15 now, right? So we have these Felix Gray glasses. Mm -hmm. um, the the, the uh, Yeah, they're there. They've got uh, the, uh, the blue light blocking technology right in there for looking at screens and all that shit the yeah. old average before covid started was people are staring at their screens about 11 hours either a computer day. a phone or a tv for TV 11 for hours 11 a hours a day but and that's about right if you work a nine to five job you're in front of a fucking computer all day of course you're going to burn out your eyes though go to felix gray glasses.com yeah. forward slash drinking bros um, and they got free overnight shipping in these glasses. They are the best. Everyone steals these every time they come to the studio. Yeah. And it is yeah. bullshit because um, we love these goddamn things. Uh, Tiffany's the one who keeps taking these goddamn Tiffany, things. Tiffany, uh, Amiri King stole some. Yeah. 
Um, I either think, way, I think classic it, Tiffany. Yeah. Classic Tiff. That's that's Tiffers classic for you though. Tiffany. That's fucking what a white girl, Tiffany Tiffers. Nice name, you know. Um, uh, go to FelixGreatGlasses.com forward slash Drinking Bros and get yours today. Free overnight shipping. If you need a prescription in those, uh, th- throw an extra twenty bucks at them, mm-hmm. and they'll pop them in for you. Best in the biz, man. That's the only thing that's saving my eyesight at night. Mine are at home. I don't even bring them into the studio anymore because I get fucking jacked every time. Yeah, I, I tethered mine. Did you? To my body. Yeah, you did. I won't tell you where. Ooh. Uh, Kill Clip mm. is next. Yeah, KillClipCBD.com. You ever had uh, CBD? You a big CBD guy? Uh, I don't think I've ever had CBD, actually. Great, dude. Uh, yeah, KillCliffCBD.com so. is the best drinkable in the biz. Um, I, I drink. We drink a can of this shit every night. <laughs> 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. No THC, so you will not piss hot. Three amazing flavors, grape, uh, orange, kush, and mango. <laughs> the grape is my favorite. I'm a child. I'm a six-year-old who only mm-hmm. likes grape things. <clears throat> you let, Let's be clear about why it is you like grape. Are you willing to admit this if I bring it up? Good. It's because you like lean. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's and true. grape tastes best with lean. It does. It's just the way it, it is, does. man. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros. Twenty percent off and free shipping there. Serp. You can get those cans right to your fucking house. Um, what else are you personally working on now? And uh, and what city are you headed to next? So what we're gonna be working on, honestly, you guys, after leaving Portland, I was like, okay, we just need to go and debate some of these people because this stuff is so out of control, mm-hmm. and and they are gaining ground. Like they, mm-hmm. you know, almost every single major city is looking at defunding, removing funds from police without even knowing where or what or why that's effective. Um, so we're probably gonna be headed up to L.A. this weekend. He Most said. He said. Up, he said week. up to LA. So he lives in like Riverside or some shit. Whoa, He's trying to be real I cagey. Orange, I live in Orange County. I live oh. in Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there it is, Dan. <laughs> Dan fucking sniffed it out. Um, what, what, what's happening in Los? Uh, is there still protests in Los Angeles? We did not see any. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Um, but we saw a lot of homeless. Um, well, they were painting the BLM mural on on Vine, I think. Oh, you're right. When yes, we were there. Yes, but yes, that's yes. it. Like, there was like 12 people out there. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Does it go from city to city? Because that's kind of what it, it's starting to feel like. Yeah, it's kind of just all over the place. We're not seeing those massive protests mm-hmm. that we were seeing before, mm-hmm. but we are seeing pretty good sized ones with hundreds of people still. Uh, last weekend, let's think, the only one that I'm aware of that I really saw was them protesting at police officers' homes, which Yeesh. is them just bringing it to a new level. Sure. Uh, probably at least maybe 50 to 100 people there protesting in front of the uh, officer's house. In, in LA County, um, I, I, I don't know exact details, but um, they're kind of all over the place. You'll you'll have them in Santa Ana, Irvine. You'll have them, you know, downtown LA. Sure. Well, those all those over. first so, two you said are a little bit wider than other areas of LA. Do you think that has anything to do with it? Like maybe other I, I, people have things to do, and white unemployed yeah, children. Yeah. White, I, white unemployed. <laughs> The real question I have is, it, there was this lady that I spoke to at a protest a little bit, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, and she was like, oh, an officer told me to go protest in Compton, and I know what she meant by that. And I was like, I don't think you do. What, what the officer clearly meant was, yo, there's a lot of big problems going on, and you guys are focusing on like these like wealthy areas for no yeah. reason at all. Like, Go fi- go focus on the communities that need it most. Yeah. yeah and that, 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 it's funny you say that, because when I was in Los Angeles, the only protest I saw was in Ventura. Um, oh really? So I went up and they Jesus were Christ. the Black Lives Matter. They went down uh, Main Street, which you know all the restaurants are, are now outside. So it's like, did Whole Foods run out of quinoa? It, what the fuck are they protesting? That, that's up there? the thing. And like you know, and I'm with Jesus I was with my six year old getting ice cream at Ben and Jerry's, and everybody's screaming Black Lives Matter. My you know somebody was right behind my kid was like, why is it all white people saying this? And I was like, I don't know, and I don't know what you hope to gain by going up to people outside the the wood fire pizza place. And screaming in their face, the black you, lives you know matter. what like, helps. You know what helps is thoughtful conversation, or go to the precinct. Like if you're if you want to change the police, go to the precinct itself. I guess I don't. What the fuck? Oh, I don't know about uh, changing police policy. I just mean in this entire debate when this all first kicked off, about I would say eighty percent of America was on board, mm-hmm. and it's slowly yeah. going Big down. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as we find well, out, look, if BLM is an organization, and it is, mm-hmm. and the fucking three main leaders of it all say legit, are, are espousing legit Marxist ideologies, that to me makes it a Marxist organization. That does not mean that everybody who supports BLM obviously has Marxist intentions or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But if 
Like if I start a company right now that does any kind of fucking business at all and I say we're a Marxist company and I own it, we're a Marxist company. The end, yeah. bitch. Like if it, it's the inability to fucking admit that the movement has been co-opted in that way is has taken it from the vast majority of Americans being in favor of it to it's dwindling down. Like there are these new polls coming out from CNN, obviously in Washington Post that say uh, the majority of Americans support BLM. Uh, they don't distinguish between the movement and the organization, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's still only like 53%. That number, if it was the movement, Black Lives Matters and not this bullshit organization, that number should be in the 80 to 85 range because that's typically what people believe reasonable stuff in this country like uh like reasonable gun control measures are supported by somewhere between 85 and 91 percent depending on what polls you believe of all americans like people don't want for, here's a good example the terror watch list that the federal government keeps does not talk to the fucking gun ban list mm -hmm. you can be a fucking suspected terrorist and legally buy a handgun in this country that's a problem that everybody acknowledges but we can't do shit to fix it even though that amount of people fucking agree on it so anyways, that, that's the amount of people that are reasonable when it comes to certain issues in this country about stuff, 85 or so percent. That number has dwindled down 30 points Yeah, because of this fucking bullshit. And it's, it's irritating because I don't want uh, whatever bastard children I don't have out there to have to deal with this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know any of them, but I wish them well. Me neither. And I don't even, I, like even having these conversations of like, why why are these white people dressed in black with their faces <clears throat> covered and all this shit like i well I don't, black is slimming maybe they're feeling anxious about their body perhaps i but mean covid uh, no gems are open i don't know yeah it's july in in los angeles a little bit warm um <laughs> for that that attire um but last it, last weekend in portland there was uh officers up on the building and and this this chick right next to me is screaming as well as many other people but she's screaming saying i can see how ugly you are from all the way down here you effing pig and I look over because she screamed it right next to me. I look over and I'm right next to my buddy and it's just this whale. <laughs> this whale Yikes. dressed in all black. And I'm like, and I'm like, God, self-awareness is crazy. <laughs> it is <laughs> like, crazy. I don't even know how it, you do what you do, to be honest, because you know how stupid all this shit is. How do you sit there night after night and talk to these fucking people with a straight face? Um, honestly, I kind of just look at it from the perspective of them being Americans even though I may strongly disagree with them, they kind of have, they do have like a similar end goal for the most part. Like a lot of people, like people want safer communities. People want better policing. People want all this stuff. And then where we wildly disagree is how to go about it. Mm. And kind of their, you know, it, it's, it's, it's getting worse and worse. So it's, it's, you almost like can't agree on anything, but um, I don't know. I, I don't really have a, I have a pretty high tolerance for stupidity, I guess, or, or, or aggressive behavior. I mean, people could be screaming at me and I'm pretty mellow in front of them. Um, I don't really have a problem with that at all. And then when it comes to the protest, we actually dress, um, we actually dress undercover. So, uh, I'll wear a BLM bandana. I'll wear all this stuff, a hoodie. Mm -hmm. And, um, just because, Hey, believe it or not, showing up in a MAGA hat is not a good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, who would have thunk <laughs> and there's thousands of them um <laughs> but yeah it's never really been a big problem at all honestly uh let me let me ask you this here um the body cam footage got released from the uh police officers mm -hmm. in the george uh floyd case this week um there has been some people in the media, uh, in particular on the right. Buck Sexton was one of them saying that we, we did not get the full story with this George Floyd thing. Um, I watched it. It was about 13, 14 minutes long of this body cam footage. Here was my honest it. thoughts, and, and uh, I, I'm curious to get your reaction to it, is um, I think the charges are too high, and I don't know how they're going to prove intent um, to murder, uh, to get these guys... Um, for a, for a prison sentence, um, to to get them on these 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 charges like this, and um, and I think this is why the DA and everybody took their time in charging these police officers or trying to at least because they wanted to make sure to get it right because it was it's really difficult to watch that first thirteen minutes of footage. He's clearly <clears throat> on drugs. Um, I haven't seen it, so recount recap it for me a little bit. So so 
Yeah, yeah I'll go, let you. No, go ahead. No, you do it. Yeah. You're the guest. Okay, fuck okay, this guy. Okay, so yeah, essentially what <laughs> what they never what they never showed is this this body cam footage. And to be honest with you, as soon as it was released, I was pretty shocked at how silent the media was. And even when it was released, if they did mention anything, they kind of missed the points. The major points here were from the body cam footage. It would show them pulling up. You know, he starts freaking out. He's clearly clearly off his ass mm -hmm. on whatever drugs or alcohol he's on okay he's he's, he's, he's he was foaming totally, at the mouth and the officer was totally asking him up. yeah why, why he was yeah. foaming at the mouth yeah yeah and so officers are, are nervous he they're asking him to show him their uh show him show, sorry show them his hands mm -hmm. he's not showing them his hands the officer does uh you know have his hand hand on his gun and as soon as he shows his hands puts his gun away okay great um they take him out of the car he starts saying how he can't breathe while he's standing up. Mm -hmm. He's getting claustrophobic, even though he was just in a car. And he's kind of resisting arrest and not really cooperating. The cops do appear to be doing a very good job at this point. Um, and by the way, I'll just note, I don't, you know, obviously I'm not for like what happened. I think it was pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. the, the knee mm -hmm. on the neck was a bad play, all this stuff, right? Yeah. We all agree with this. Yeah. But um, th for this video, they're putting him in the squad car. He's, he's resisting. They're telling him to stop resisting. He gets in the car, and this was the biggest part, actually, is he kept saying he couldn't breathe when he was sitting down in the car, mm. which was like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? He mentioned that his mom, I think, just died when she didn't. This guy's wired, right? And uh, he asks to lay on the ground instead of going in their car. He asks to lay on the ground, and he's totally tweaking, saying he can't breathe the whole time. And so it really... It, it, it's okay back to your point they're pursuing second degree murder or at least they were yeah we'll see um now. public opinion cannot sway what a what a doable charge should be what it what a possible charge should be they did the same thing i think it was was it was it zimmer was it zimmerman's case yeah zimmerman's case should have been it should have been manslaughter at like second degree manslaughter probably is what he should have been charged with and that that was not yeah. the case right and, he and got they let obviously. public yeah. opinion sway what it what it was, what it ended up being, and everyone lost it. And everyone yeah. was like, "Oh, the system's so rigged." It's like, no, you went after something you couldn't do, and you know what? They're going to lose a second degree murder. Oh yeah, case like third degree, one hundred percent. I when it when like what was it? Two days after Floyd got killed, I mm -hmm. watched all the stuff and read all the reports. I'm like, this is a third degree murder charge. At if if everything we're seeing is correct, yep. And they charge him mm. with third degree murder. And then what, two weeks later, they're like, it's not enough. You got to fucking do. No, you charge what you can fucking convict, man. That's the way it works. Because of protesters. Um, everybody come out and said, you got to charge up the charges, get higher charges on these guys. And it's like, hey, man, you still have to go to court and prove that charge. And I don't know how you do that with that body cam footage that was just released. You don't. You, you can't uh, prove intent to murder based no. on the way that they treated him for the first 14 minutes of that video. And I'm, I'm look, we all agree that he shouldn't have put his fucking knee on his neck. And he was clearly out um, and gone at that point. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, you have to charge to what is appropriate or you're not going to get a conviction. And yeah. I'm not sure they get a conviction. No, and that's a real problem. It's going to be a real problem that's next year. Problem. Yeah. Because people you are going to If, they, if lose they get away with this, if they lose this, this this charge if they lose it there's going to be riots that we've never seen in the united states and it's not because of the racist system it's because idiots that listen to popular opinion over what they should have actually gone after i agree and i think you know when this does kick off next summer um we could be in the same situation that we are now because i just don't think you can get it i don't think you can get it it's the same with uh, casey anthony same with mm -hmm. zimmerman the charges were too high yeah. Um, and uh, the, the prosecution went for it because of, of uh, the, the public outcry. You can't get sentimental about enforcing the law. It doesn't work that way. Right. Like it's, no. it's, it's ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. You can either convict something you can't. Look, there's a lot of nuance when you have 12 people in a jury to convict, for sure. But the letter of the law, if it's spelled out correctly, like the judge, the first thing that the judge does in a case like this, the first time he addresses the jury, he tells them what the charges are and what the requirements are to convict on that charge. And when he re reads the requirements for a second degree murder and a Minnesota fucking uh, jury, no fucking way, dude. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Uh, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week. Uh, this drinking bro mm -hmm. of the week was submitted from uh, BK from SD. Is that South Dakota? Uh, maybe. All right. 
Look at that. I don't know. Uh, we we never get anybody from the Dakotas. No. I'm always proud of it. There's like 12 people there. Said he's been not, not San Diego, right? No, no. definitely not San Diego. Uh, you, go, you go a strong SD like that, you, it's got to be South Dakota. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because it's in all caps too, so it's got to be. Sure. That's got to be on the envelope um, where they're they're sending their power bill. Um, he said he's nominating Tony Sutter, um, and uh, Coffee or Die actually did a uh, uh, an article hmm. on him um, for the. It's a it's a great piece. Um, it's uh, it's a U.S. Army veteran who cleaned up a vandalized Purple Heart sign in South Dakota. So we do have the answer there to South Dakota. There's another one written by uh, Joshua uh, Scovlin, Marty's brother. Mm, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of him. Yep. Um, he said uh, Tony Sutter was at work when he noticed photos of a vandalized sign pop up in his neighborhood watch group on Facebook um, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I wonder if uh, Elizabeth Warren spent any time in Sioux. Maybe not her tribe. No. I think she was Cherokee. That's what my family is. Uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota is a Purple Heart City which falls under the Purple Heart Trail program. Uh, one of their signs was uh, marked on Highway 11, had been spray painted black, and he went out there to, uh, to help clean it up. Uh, you can see the picture of it um, uh, in Sioux Falls. So, yeah. Why, what, of all the things it you worked. could vandalize, why that one? I don't know, Do you man. think that man or woman wanted to go get fucked up? For their country, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's not the intent, by the way. Spray painted a purple that's, heart yeah, sign. Like what the fuck? That's like Jeez. spray painting handicap signs or something. I don't, I don't know if you guys saw. I had that video uh, two weekends ago in LA, and uh, right outside the LAPD headquarters, uh, there's the fallen officer kind of memorial mm -hmm. where it shows all their badges, has all their names, and yeah, there's yeah. about you know ten or so little glass cases. And uh, when we were at the BLM, it was a BLM Antifa protest is what it was, showing solidarity for Portland because apparently that's a thing now. Um, <laughs> and they went up to every single box and just spray painted mm. X's all over the glass. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's only going to get worse. Um, last question for you here before we let you get out of here. Let's say Trump does win on, the, on November 3rd, um, and uh, it is a decisive victory. Right. What happens the morning of November 4th? Um, because I was in New York last time when he won and it was fucking 10, 15,000 people <laughs> protesting through the streets. Um, you've been out in this every single night, uh, get involved in these cities. What happens if he wins uh, either that night or the next day? Is it just going to be fucking full on chaos in all these these cities? Uh, I'll be honest with you guys for the next for, for probably 10 days at least straight there's going to be some of the biggest protests we've mm -hmm. seen in the United <clears throat> States if I had to guess um, I think it's going to be uh, partially because and and hear me out here mm -hmm. I think partially because they know that Ruth Bader Ginsburg's not going to make it another four mm -hmm. years possibly or another and four hours the, yeah. she might not make for it sure. four hours yeah. and, and that's gonna, that's going to that's going to increase it uh, but these people genuinely believe that Trump is a racist they believe that he's a fascist they believe all this stuff and uh you know that's what drives this very aggressive uh behavior when it comes to going out the streets rioting protesting yeah people are going to lose their minds man people are going to absolutely lose their minds I'll probably if uh if he wins uh, I'll probably fly out to DC just to cover everything that's going on because it's going to be chaos. It'll be it'll be chaos for at least I would say ten days straight. I can't imagine it would just be a peaceful. Hey, he won, <laughs> great. No, it's not going to be quiet. It's not going to be quiet at all. It's going to be chaos. It I'll, wasn't quiet four years ago. I wonder imagine what, now. I wonder what the inauguration is going to look like. That'll be. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the calendar. It'll January. Like January it's usually January twenty first. Yeah. The the third week in January usually. Yeah. But some, it'll be my January God, the nineteenth. Yeah. They'll probably have trouble even hosting the, the inauguration because people are going to be throwing objects mm -hmm. into the crowd. I mean, I I couldn't even imagine that it, any of this stuff is going to be peaceful. No, and I and I wonder with the, the, the rhetoric back and forth between Obama, because, you know, all, all the past presidents usually show up. Um, th they didn't do it for the unveiling of the, the White House uh, portrait. No, and then fucking uh, Trump put Obama and George W. Bush's portraits in another part of the White House. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's like the most he's like the most petty, petty dude. Of so all time. petty. I fucking so it's, petty. it's actually I mean, if it wasn't causing us problems though it would be really funny it's pretty funny yeah, but for sure. I, I can't imagine if if they if he does win 
and they do have this inauguration <laughs> if any of those presidents show up. No, fuck no. I mean, they're all no, going to... No, absolutely not. It'll, even if there's a COVID vaccine by then, they'll find a reason. Yeah. Like, oh, I haven't gotten it yet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've never got my invitation, but yeah, sorry right. about it. Uh, dude, you're a fascinating guy, man. Mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy your YouTube channel. Tell everybody one more time, remind them where they can find you and, uh, and watch your videos. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, my handle is James Klug, K-L-U-G on Instagram and uh, and YouTube for Facebook and Twitter. It's real James Klug just because I kind of get the handle. Uh, and you guys, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate yeah, it. Time. Absolutely, man. Uh, dude, yeah. you're a fascinating dude. Please come back um, mm-hmm. after the election because, look, if Trump wins... You're going to be the guy out there, man. So we'd love to have you back on the show. Yeah, that's we're, cool. we're actually doing an election party live in Austin. In on, Austin, Texas. On, yeah, we're doing a live show that night so for you, seven you just, hours. You can just come there because uh, there will be a lot of armed people, so you don't have to worry about riots or anything. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. No, I mean, I would, I would love to you guys. It was definitely a, definitely a huge pleasure being on the show, mm-hmm. and I'd love to come back. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, check out James's videos if you have not yet. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.